The following organizations have provided funding for this Into the Outdoors television series. It's an art. It's a science. I'm telling you, it's an art. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's a science. <sighs> Don't argue, you're both right. It's both an art and a science. See, I told you. Wait, Wait we're, we're both, both right? right? You're both right. It's the art and science of making cheese. Find out how scientific and tastefully artful on this very special episode of Into, Into the, the Outdoors. Outdoors. And I'm Stefan, and we're going to show you the science and art of how cheese making is done. Turning milk into cheese is a little bit complicated, so we're going to help you learn all about it. From pasture to cow, from milk to cheese, there's a whole process that turns milk into the best tasting cheese around. That's right, we're going to start on the farm. After all, that's where the process begins with the land and the cows. You know, Katie, scientifically speaking, milk is loaded with nine essential nutrients, including calcium, protein, phosphorus, and potassium, niacin, riboflavin, and vitamins A, D, and B12. Way to throw in that science right away. Let's head to the barn. Wisconsin has about 13,000 dairy farms. Loosely translated, that means the state is populated by more than 1.2 million dairy cows. That means there are more cows in Wisconsin than kids in school. Pretty impressive, huh? So how do cows make all that good milk? Well, it starts with the good food for the cows. Thousands of years ago, when glaciers pushed through Wisconsin, it created the perfect landscape for grazing cows. Lush rolling hills and limestone filtered water are perfect for dairy cows. Isn't this pastoral and pretty? No wonder so many people paint scenes like this. Uh, Katie? I know you're into art and all, but there really is a science to the way cows get fed. Good soil means excellent feed will grow. And when the cows eat the grass and clover, they're getting a bunch of vitamins and minerals. And when they give milk, they pass on those good things to us through their milk and other dairy products. Okay, so you win this round. But I'm sure there's an art to this somehow. Well, I know there's a science to the way cows get fed. Let's go see about that. Okay. You may think cows only eat hay and clover, but their diet is much more complicated than that. Cows get fed a specific diet depending on where they're at in their life cycle. Hey there, it's Cassidy, and here's a question from one of our curious viewers. Lisa from Rice Lake writes, I know that a baby cow is called a calf, but what's the difference between a heifer and a cow? Great question, Lisa. And luckily, I have an answer for you. Our beautiful bovines have different names for their different stage of life. A newborn is called a calf up to one year of age. From that point on, the females are called heifers. She will remain a heifer until she gives birth for the first time. She then becomes a full-fledged cow. I hope that answers your question, Lisa. Now let's move back onto the farm where we left off. Hi, we're here with Jeff Buchholz of So Fine Bovines. Jeff, can you tell us the science behind the cow's diet? Well, Stefan, each animal, depending on what stage of life it's in, will get a number of different ingredients that it's fed every day. The newborn calf will get the mother's colostrum for the first day, and the colostrum is real high in antibodies to help keep the animal healthy and growing. After the first day, it'll go on the mother's milk, and then it'll get a combination of some different grains and proteins also to help grow its muscles strong and at two months of age it'll be weaned off the milk and then it'll go on a combination of all these ingredients we have in front of us. 
We have some different ingredients that goes in the cow's diet. This is a chopped corn, this is chopped hay, and this is whole cotton seed. Wait, did you say cotton seed? Yes, I did, Katie. The cotton seed is what's left over from the cotton process after they take the cotton ball off the, off the seed and the cotton goes for a clothes and so forth. And the seed what's left over is real high in energy and protein and digestible fiber. All those are required for a healthy growing animal. Most of the animals probably are getting a better balanced diet than most humans are just because they have a nutritionist figuring out their diet. And depending on what he tells us to mix in, we'll add different varying amounts into a great big recipe. Recipe, huh? That seems pretty artistic, right? Well, Katie, what we're trying to achieve is the best balance of nutrients so that the animals can produce the highest quality milk for us. You two want to see the milking powder? Sure! Let's go. Here at SoFine Bovines, they milk about 600 cows, and each cow gets milk three times a day. So as you can imagine, it is a long process to collect all that milk. So this is our milking parlor. It's a double 10 parallel, uh, meaning that the cows, there's 10 cows on each side, and the cows face out. Uh, as the cows get in the position to be milked, the people milking will come through and scrub each, each teat with a disinfectant solution, and then they'll come back and wipe each teat so it's nice and clean, and then they'll attach the milking unit to start the process. Uh, when the cow is milked out, the unit will come off and they'll come back and dip them with a disinfectant solution again to protect them until the next time they come back in to be milked. Does it hurt the cows to be milked? No, it doesn't hurt them. It's, uh, it's a natural process, just like the calf nurses on the mother. Uh, we can stick, your, can stick your finger in there and see how it feels. Almost kind of a pulsating action. Uh, when the milkers start to scrub the cows and clean them, it sends a signal to the brain and the brain will release oxytocin. And the oxytocin causes the milk uh, cells in the udder to contract and then the milk will begin to flow out. So where does the milk all go from here? Uh, as you can see, it's collected in this bowl and goes down the hose. And then from the hose, it goes in these pipes and will go into the milk house. And if you'd like to see the milk house, we can do that. Steph, and you had asked where the milk goes when it leaves the milking parlor from the cow. Uh, it comes into the milk house here, into our receiver jar, where all the milk is collected, and then from there it's pumped overhead into our chiller here. And uh, you can feel the milk coming in. You know, it's about 95 degrees. And then it travels through the chiller here and comes out. It's about 36 degrees. Oh, that's cold. And then from there, it travels through the pipes and it goes into the, the milk tanker. And then once a day, the milk hauler will come and pick the load up. The milk from our farm is made into cheese. Cheese, huh? So the milk gets sent to cheese makers who artfully cracked it into cheese. See, Stefan, it is an art. Fine, if that's how you want to look at it. Head to intotheoutdoors.org to milk up some great information about life on the farm. You'll want to stay tuned because coming up next, we'll find out what happens to all that milk once it leaves the farm. Don't go away, there's more.